Hello, everybody. You hear me? Yeah. You want to sleep? You want to talk? <laughs> Bad time for talking. Uh, okay. Well, here we are. This is G3M. It's an SDK for developers designed to build mobile native map apps for any platform and for any device. You hear me? Properly? Uh, so Closer. 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 Whoa. <laughs> Can swing. This is what I'm going to tell you. Uh, why we're here, the challenges we have faced, the capabilities of our SDK, the architecture, and at the end you're going to see it in action. So, first of all, the origin. We started over NASA World Wind building a framework which was called Block 3. We didn't focus then on mobile, uh, but at the same time, people from the University of the Canary Island were building a tool for 3D scenarios, also in open source, which was called Capaware. And somewhere in the, in the route we meet, we started working together, trying to do something for mobility. But we didn't like the results, so a couple of years ago we decided to throw all away and start again with the new uh, development from the scratch. And that's what we're going to show you now. Uh, the challenges were mobility, which is now very, it's an evidence, it's more than a trend. We all are in mobility, but three years ago, four years ago, we wasn't that sure that everybody was going to use it and it was going to have a, a strong impact in many industries like uh, humanitarian aid or uh, agriculture, mining, defense, all this stuff. Now it's in evidence. Another challenge was fragmentation and you see there are some different platforms, Apple and EOS, Android uh, and others that are going to come now in the future and this fragmentation is about software, about hardware and it's going to be, uh, it's going to increase in future because there are many forks escaping <coughs> from Android and uh, we're going to have new and new devices in, in many of the environments. So uh, when you build applications for mobility, you have to fight against this or focus on just one single device, one single platform. performance. We, we like maps, we like uh, maps that <laughs> uh, you can pan, you can zoom, you can uh, obtain data quickly. So uh, this, uh, it's very difficult to find uh, the exact performance with the new devices. They, they give you more uh, power in the device, but also a better screen, uh, a more, more resolution so the power is used for the home, the, the own device in their work. And your map is still going a bit slowly. That's another thing we wanted to overpass. And usability, of course. We wanted to, to do it in a, in, with a, in a screen touch. It's not <coughs> that simple. When you, when you build a applications for, for a PC or web applications, you don't resize mm -hmm. them, you don't reduce them to, <laughs> to be able to use them on a mobile phone or on a, an iPad. You have to rebuild, redesign everything. And that's what we, we did. These are the capabilities. We said multi-platform, multi but it's not exactly like that. We made an SDK to allow developers build very easily and quickly native applications for the different platforms. Okay. In 2D to 5D and 3D and also scenario maps from a Google Earth kind of visualization, the whole globe, to a local scenario with the detailed scale and data of a local uh, environment. Uh, that's an example you'll see later. 
we can use it with any kind of data, from raster to digital elevation models, vectorials, cloud points, uh, objects and 3D models. Uh, these data are written in the server and we translate them in a few formats to, to enhance the, the rendering. And you can also use, uh, developers may use uh, a very rich symbology with lab links, markers, and also they can use Carto CSS if they want. It's built to be used online and offline, which is very important uh, for people that do field work in remote areas where there's no uh, signals. And you have the same data online and offline. You can capture and save all the things you're watching on your screen to work with them when you're out of the signals. Here you can see, well, uh, you, you'll see that b better later because you, you're a lot of people. Well, 3D objects and all this stuff. Uh, there are uh, subsystems in the SDK for tax management, cash management, and also for <coughs> animations. And uh, there's, uh, we offer real time, real, real time. So when uh, a developer uh, needs to, to build an application that is completely connected to the server, <coughs> maybe this is the SDK. Because changes in the server are immediately received and displayed on the device. A little bit of architecture. We, uh, to make it stronger and, and more powerful, we develop in C++ and translate it to Java. So uh, with C++, we are very close to objective C for iOS. And with Java for Android and HTML5, these two uh, platforms share about 75% of the code. So it's very fast to to code for both platforms for developers. They don't waste a lot of time. They can share more of the things they they code for one for the other. And now, well, this is an example in action. This is what you have to, to code for an Android uh, uh, app. OK? Press symbol. This is where you can find applications in iTunes and Google Play. Our web. and. This is an example of LiDAR cloud points. I think it's 3 million points. Uh, 800,000 points, yes. A few points only. Over the terrain, how is it moving? This is an object. Flying is a simulation of a, uh, of an, of a plane, but the, the flight is real. So it's following <coughs> where it is at each moment and managing a lot of information, lots of tiles, and lots of information <coughs> linked to the objects. And I'm going to show you now how we build applications. My colleague Manolo is going to explain it. Manolo sounds very Spanish, isn't it? Um, this is a service built over uh, the Ethereum platform. It's a service of publishment applications uh, in on different stores or on the web. Um, uh, what you have to do a login. Uh, it's the first, the first screen. 
when you where you can um, where you can create application. Every application that you create in the previous screen uh, finally is an application on the Apple Store or Google Play or whatever. Um, here is the console the, <coughs> where you create the different scenes into the application. You can create application for events, for uh, for whatever. Um, every application uh, have any scenes that you want. In this case, you have five scenes. Um, here, I created a new scene. Let's add them. You see, great. Uh, uh, there are other scenes. You can set a base layer. You can set a overlay layer. And that you are seeing here is the same that you want to see on the mobile application. Um, then this this part of the screen is exactly like the mobile. And you can create a new. And um, in the moment that you create the new scene, thanks to real-time server done with web sockets. Everything that you do here is in the same moment in all the telephones. This uh, avoid the um, problem of deployment, for example, on, in, on iTunes. You have to, to wait uh, 10 days, 12 days, the day that Apple wants. You deploy the apps one time, um, all the data could be changed <coughs> in the moment refreshed. that you want and it's refreshing in real time. Uh, here is the new scene. Uh, you can create, you can work. Uh, this is the new scene, you put the description, and you have to, to put a screenshot, because this is the menu that you, that you find on the mobile application. Uh, below is a, it's an iPad that is working with application, that's in, with this scene. Uh, in, th in this moment, I want to change the layer, the base layer. I want to change the base layer, and change this open screen map layer for, for Mac webs, for the open area. I change the layer, I'm changing, uh, on the mobile, it's, it's just in it. the same thing without deploying. Uh, if you change uh, other things like color, <coughs> uh, you can change uh, data or other application properties. For example, the color of the, <coughs> of the bottom of the, of the sky or, or more things than we are planning in the future. Uh, it's changing and exactly in the moment. I have to, to I, I need another screenshot because it's not the same as seen now. I have the new screenshot. Um, now the menu. When you click on the menu, you can see the new application. The idea is that you are always you can publish immediately. You can publish immediately uh, the data that you need. This is a software <coughs> service. To, this app is in, at the moment is not fine. not finished. It's in beta, but we hope we have. To have in production, to be in production in in a few weeks. For release, simply you have to to go to this screen, um, select the <coughs> store where you want to have the publication, and click on publish. Um, that's all. <laughs> Any question, please, in Spanish, Portuguese, or <laughs> Russian? What's your license? Uh, BSD, two classes. Um, your local cache data, how is that managed? What format is that? The cache is, is an SQL lead. Uh, SQL lead. Uh, is the only way to have the data in all platforms. It's different implementation, but we have abstract class, abstract methods to, to do this. 
and it's in it's in Escalade. And we have uh, we have a piece of software in, in the in the repository to translate the data to this database. Uh, the same database are interchangeable. You can have the same data in iOS, Android, or, or no, on the web. Uh, actually, on the web, no, because the, uh, every browser have a different implementation of SQL. Yes, uh, we have fighting with the mobile, <laughs> and fighting with the browser is is It's hard. <laughs> Um, a platform for mobile yeah. uh, 3D. I was just wondering, is there any reason not to use it for ordinary uh, desktop laptop web apps as well? I haven't here. I haven't here. Can you use it to... Uh, you, you don't have my strong voice. You don't have... Don't you have to, to shout. <laughs> Unless you've got a WebGL. Ah, okay. Can you use it for ordinary uh, browser? Yes, we're browser using it as well. We're using WebGL only for the browser because in the mobile don't 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 run correctly. Yeah, and on so what? I think this library is perfectly useful for the for would you apps as well. Sí, sí, para un para un portátil o para otra plataforma que no sea móvil. Yes, uh, you can use WebGL. Uh, the first translation is to WebGL. Uh, uh, with it's native only on iOS, it's native on Android, and the third translation is to WebGL. Uh, of course, the WebGL version works on Android too, but doesn't work on iOS because uh, Apple doesn't it's work close. that that uh, WebGL works on on the platform. But yes, the last platform is WebGL, and the performance is very good. Is it possible to have more than one globe on the screen at the same time? More than one, one globe. One globe. Yeah. yeah, it's more complicated in iOS. It's more complicated for uh, for different reasons, but it's possible too. Okay. It's possible. Uh, you have to think that it's an SDK. You can do what you want. Uh, you can do from a um, complicated application like MacBook, the, the software as a service that we have built over there, and um, you have uh, a very simple application only with a map with with vector and uh, or get factory info or what you want. You, you can put it's from the most simple growth or application to a very complex application. Depends on you developer. Are there any more questions? Well then, thanks again to.